what's up you guys welcome back so I took a week off I didn't really take a week off I actually did some maintenance on the Lexus and I tried to film it I do have the, some footage from I just don't know if I have enough because what I did was I was over here in my little workshop garage my little single garage and I had to change the exhaust manifold on the driver's side because they're known to crack and when they crack, you know it because it starts ticking. Tick, 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 tick. You can hear it. And I heard it for a while and it started to bug me. So I was able to go on eBay. I found some aftermarket exhaust headers. I actually got two of them, one for each side, for less than the price that it cost to get one OEM. And I figured if the OEM ones crack, I don't know if they made changes or not. So I went with this other one. Turned out fine. I got it done. But it took me a few days because I only worked on it for an hour or two late in the afternoons because it's been really hot. Actually, summer's finally arrived here. It's been mid-90s. And some weird weather blew through, not to where it rained, but just to bring some moisture and humidity here, which is usually really dry, so it felt a lot hotter. So I'm going to see if I can assemble a video just to show you, show you what I did on that one. It was pretty cool. Uh, very tight spaces those stuff in a v8 engine the front of that little lexus man i could i had to work all from the the front driver's wheel well i was inside there with the coil spring right here reaching around doing all this stuff and contorting my hands and it was interesting but i didn't break anything i didn't strip anything i replaced all the studs nuts everything you were supposed to got all new gaskets and i just actually backed it out here a little while ago because I want you guys to open your minds real wide real wide right now after working on that I got kind of a wild hair thinking man this is fun and the the budget vehicles that I bought which which was the Land Cruiser and the Lexus GX they, yeah, 2006, 2007, they're both older vehicles. But you know what? They were in pretty darn good shape. Paint, interiors, everything was good. Mechanically, pretty good. All I had to do was like a belt here and an alternator there. And I did that exhaust thing. I put a lift kit on, wheels and tires on both of them. And they're pretty good. The way they are, they're good to go. There's not a lot more for me to do unless I just start bolting on bumpers and, and crud like that, which... When you have multiple vehicles, you got to be cautious about, you really got to kind of choose one, right? You got to choose one. You can't do them all. I mean, unless you win the lottery or something, but it's going to sound crazy. You guys think I'm going to use car salesman. I bought another project vehicle and it like, there was no plans, nothing. It came out. It all came about in one week, one week's period of time. And that was the week I was working on the Lexus. I was having a good time working on it. And I'm like, you know what? I almost wish I, I remember the days when I was a kid standing inside the engine bay of an F100 Ford truck, the old three on the tree. I would, st I remember I would stand inside the engine bay with it running, the metal fan spinning right here, adjusting lifters. Now, I was a little kid. I was being told what to do, but I was in there. I know it sounds dangerous. You do that today, someone's going to jail, but this is how I learned, you know? It's how I learned. Just imagine the exhaust right in front of you here, the fan spinning, valve cover off, adjusting. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember. I was small. I know I'm dragging this out. Listen, I found something. I, look, I'm going to tell you a story, but I'm gonna tell, I got a good story. There's a good story behind this. I'm going to show you what it is. It's an 80 Series Land Cruiser. 80 Series Land Cruiser, 1997. Now, if you don't know what the 80 Series Land Cruiser is, it's just like my 100 Series, except it's got the solid front axle like the Jeep. Coil suspension all the way around. Very inexpensive to lift these things. That's the new project. So... There's a ton of stuff to do on it. So as far as the interior goes, the two front seats are jacked, right? They're totally ripped up, but I already found foam and uh, leather to rewrap the front seats. The second row, it's, it's not torn, but it's fine. So I don't have to touch that. The carpet is in good shape. 
It's got a dark brown and tan two-tone interior. And the exterior, I had to look this up because I, I, there's so much faded paint and clear coat gone. I didn't even know what colors these were. So apparently, this is factory two-tone. It's desert, desert dune on the top and moon glow on the bottom. So it's kind of like a... It's kind of like a white pearl tan color on top. And then the, this moon glow is a bluish gray. It's weird. It's hard to tell. I had to look it up on my other Land Cruiser because sometimes that thing looks gray. Sometimes it looks blue gray. Apparently that one, the 100 series, is galactic gray. I looked this up on some old classic car thing that, that listed these by the years and what the options were. And the interior is tan and then dark brown. So dark brown carpets, the door panels have two-tone. You can get a two-tone seat, but I'm just gonna go back with the tan like it was. A Lot of work to do. It's got a blown axle seal already. There's just, there's oil all underneath it. So I gotta hunt down the oil leaks. I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do first is get the oil leaks addressed, figure out. Hopefully it's not a rear main seal because that's going to be a difficult one. You got to drop the transfer case, transmission, and then replace that seal and put it all back. A lot of cleaning to do underneath, a lot of oil and road grime. So the story was, oh, this is a 1997, 97 80 series. So 97 was the last year of the 80 series. It ran from, I think, 90 to 97, and then 98 started the 100 series, and my 100 series is 2006, and that series ended in 2007. So, we found a 92 online for 10,000. And I'm like, wow, that's, you know, you gotta remember these 80 series, depending on the condition they're in and how much stuff's been done to them, I've seen them 20, 30, 40, 50, 60,000 dollars. And they're hard to come by. They're hard to come by, because there's, this is in the United States. In other countries, they're, they're, there's a lot more of them. They're not a lot here, and they're sought after because of the front axle. Being that this is a 97, it's the last year they made, so it's got, it's got all the options and every, all the good stuff that's been done through that series has been done with this. It does not have diff locks, axle locks. It has center locking diff, but not the axle diffs. So that's okay, because I think with those ones, I probably, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have cried if it came with them, but Eventually, I'd like to put air lockers in this thing because I, I really do like the on-demandness of the air lockers. Kind of gone back and forth with that over uh, talking in a few videos, and I've come to that conclusion. I like that. So, what I'm thinking is, and what I, what I was thinking was, I'm going to really do this thing all myself right here in the driveway. I'm going to share it with you guys from the regular maintenance stuff to doing a lift. This has got factory suspension on it still. I can bounce on it. The, the shocks are blown. It's about this far off the bump stops. The springs have sagged. 1997, the year. Anyway, we found it in Denver, and it was uh, 10000 for a 92. And we called them on a Monday. No, we called them on a Tuesday after this last Memorial Day weekend. The owner was out of town. One of the mechanics answered. It was like a really small, small place. It was available. You know, I'm make a long story short. The day we got a plane ticket to fly there. But when we talked to him, he said, oh, I've got three. I've got a 91, a 92, and a 97. And I'm thinking, 90... And 91 had the older engine, the old pig, the old tractor engine that just couldn't get out of its own way. 155 horsepower. But the 97 has got the 24 valve 1 FZFE, something like that. 24 valve, so dual overhead cam, timing chain, 212 horsepower. So I'm like, oh, okay. But he said, man, this one, is, the 92 was in great shape. Like, the, like someone had restored the interior and everything. It was in good shape all stock. No one's touched these. No one's lifted them. No one's messed with axles. No one's welded anything on them. Even though it's in poor shape, that's a good starting point for someone like me. I don't have to go and chase around and fix somebody else's like really, really shoddy work. So ended up the day before we flew out there, 
they sold the 92. Because we were going to look at them both and make a decision. Because we really didn't know what this looked like. They, they, it was, wasn't even advertised yet. So we said, okay. Flew out there. I didn't fly out there. My girlfriend flew out there. <laughs> look, we were going to do it during the week when I couldn't go. But ended up pushing all the way to Friday where I could have gone. But it was too late. We already booked the ticket. So from the little municipal airport not far from here, there's a, uh, one of those Canada Air regional jets. Pretty decent sized plane. It's about an hour and a half. Flopped over there, no worries. My buddy uh, Bucket picked her up, dropped her off at the place. She called me up and I said, all right, let's do it. So we got this one for 11 8 It was more money, uh, newer, whatever. 11 8 And she jumps in it and starts driving home. It's almost it's 13 hours and 800, I think 800 and something miles. Remember, she flew out, landed, picked it up, and started driving, and she was going to stop in Santa Fe, I think, and spend the night. She got to Santa Fe, and she's like, I'm not tired. I'm going to keep driving down to Albuquerque. Hit Albuquerque. I'm not tired. I'm on the 40 now. She drove all the way home, got home at 4 a.m. I stayed. I didn't, get, I didn't sleep the night before she flew out because I had got my, my booster COVID shot, my second and final shot ever. And it, it doesn't affect me at all other than the injection point. And it was making this joint ache. My shoulder was aching. I couldn't sleep. Dropped her off. I came out here. I finished up the Lexus while she was doing all this stuff. Now I'm obviously not worried, but, you know, anxious. So I stayed up. Just before she got home, I fell asleep on the couch like at 3 in the morning. Then she got home and... The next day I looked at it and the, I saw this wheel bearing. I smelled some fuel. I see all kinds of oil. And she was just hauling butt all the way home. I mean, if that's not a winner right there, I don't know what is. She totally handled business. And here it is. Now I got this really good project to do. Like I said, it's not going straight out off-road. And I've got, I've got maintenance issues to address. Number one, I'm going to take care of this wheel bearing. It's got, I, and I'll show it to you when I do the job. It's all crusted up. For a kit from Marlin Crawler, I think 54 bucks to get all the seals I need. So I'll clean it out, replace all the seals. While I'm in there, I'll take a look at the bearings and everything. I'm not going to go buy stuff that I don't know whether I need it or not. But I definitely know it needs seals. Get that. i got to get all the oil and everything cleaned up and all the road grime. See where else it possibly... Because this could have been throwing it everywhere. It could be from that. But it could be from other places. It's that dirty. But I thought it might be an interesting project, but I am going to have to sell one of my other vehicles now. And I don't know what to do, because I don't really want to sell the other Land Cruiser. It's, it's literally been my daily driver. Every morning I get up, I take Buck, my dog, for a ride, and I, I jump around town in it. She drives the Raptor. I'm definitely not getting rid of the Jeep. It's paid for, and it's, it's you know, fully kitted out. It's my most, you know, newest... It's my newest vehicle and it's my most capable one. It only leaves the Lexus. So I got some thinking and figuring out to do here with uh, not being that guy on the street with all these cars. <laughs> this one's hiding by this garage. The Jeep's in the garage. So I only have three cars out front. Yeah, it's still too much. Anyway, I'm pretty excited about putting hands on and getting back to, you know, doing all the work myself and bringing you guys along the way. I'm already going through and kind of doing some wish list stuff, trying to figure out exactly. I can tell you this right now, if you're interested, I'm going to run 35s on it, but I only need to do a two and a half inch lift. I don't want to, you go any more than that, you start having caster issues. So you start having to change radius arms. And so two and a half inch lift, 35s, bumpers, and that kind of stuff should be a lot of fun. So this might be a weird video. I wanted to share it with you guys because this is going to be interesting. I'm still going to be doing the off-roading, the overlanding stuff, the adventuring. Too hot to camp right now for me at least. But we're going to be adding in these maintenance and pro real project stuff. Those other cars were projects, but there wasn't a whole lot needed to be done to them. You know, there really wasn't. They were in really good shape. This one, there's a lot of work to be done. 
We're talking about interior, exterior, mechanical, all kinds of stuff. Maybe I can get some, some uh, partners on board that want to, sh want to uh, bring their parts in on this project. That would be very helpful to the old pocketbook. I'm only going to, if that happens, I'm only going to choose, though, the people that I would want to buy and put the stuff on anyway. I'm not just going to do it because someone offered me something for free. It's not the way I work. There's a lot of quality stuff out there, and there's a lot of good companies that are willing to be a part of a project like this. So hopefully I can get something like that going because then I could go even, my money could go even farther, right? Anyway, you guys, I hope this is something interesting for you guys along the way. This is going to take a while, and I'm going to mix this stuff in, and it should be really interesting. So that's going to do it for today's video, you guys. <laughs> I'm pretty excited and also nervous. We'll see you in the next video.